Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to add another Home Assistant installation platform into the mix. So far we've installed onto Windows, Apple Silicon and even onto a Synology NAS. Now we add the most common host platform of all, the Raspberry Pi, and do it in under 10 minutes. So let's get our fruit ready and start making the pie. To run Home Assistant smoothly, it is recommended that you install onto a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 with at least 4GB of RAM. Although technically you can install onto older models such as a Raspberry Pi 3B and older, it is not recommended for a good experience. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 5 with 8GB of RAM. You will also need a microSD card with at least 32GB of storage although I would recommend 64GB to future-proof your Home Assistant installation. You should also look for a microSD card with at least Class 2 speed rating, which is 2 megabytes per second, although the higher the class, the faster. I'll put a link in the description to various classifications you can purchase and what they mean. When selecting a card, remember that the Raspberry Pi uses the microSD as its disk drive, and although it's very reliable these days, there are a lot of cheap fakes out there. So make sure you buy from a reputable seller for a quality microSD, or expect it to fail and put you into a world of pain recovering your Home Assistant instance. As we're going to be installing the Home Assistant installation files from a computer, in my case a Mac Mini, You'll need to be able to copy the files to the micro SD card by using a micro SD card reader. This doesn't need to be anything fancy or a specific brand or speed requirements, so just the cheapest USB card reader you can find. It is recommended that you connect your Raspberry Pi to your router via a LAN cable for best possible and most reliable connection. Although you can run via Wi-Fi, but it is not recommended. Providing ZigBee connectivity, I'll be using an SM Lite USB SL ZB07 ZigBee coordinator, which is compact, highly configurable, and reliable. It is good practice to not plug this directly into the Raspberry Pi due to the interference that can come from the Wi Fi and Bluetooth. As such, it's preferable to use a USB extension cable to physically separate the devices to minimize interference. Now, that sounds like a lot. However, most of this is usually sold as a single kit. I'll put links in the description to my favorite recommended kits and devices. First, let's get the software to be able to create the Home Assistant image. For this, we'll be using the Raspberry Pi Imager. Open a web browser. Navigate to the link in the description. Scroll down to the download link for the Raspberry Pi Imager. Download the install Raspberry Pi Imager software specific to your operating system. In my case, this is Mac OS, but the same process applies to Windows also. If prompted, if you want to allow access to the downloads directory, press allow. The download is only 66 megabytes in size and should be really quick. Press the download icon in the top right hand corner and double click on the file. On a Mac, drag the Raspberry Pi Imager to the application directory. You can now close this window. Press command space. Search and select for Raspberry Pi Imager. If prompted if you want to allow this application to open as it was downloaded from the internet, press open. Now let's select our Raspberry Pi. Press the choose button. Select your variant of Raspberry Pi that you'll be installing onto. Next press choose OS. Scroll down and select other specific purpose OS. Now scroll down and select Home Assistant and Home Automation. Now select Home Assistant. And finally, Home Assistant OS, which at the time of filming was version 15.2. Now is the time to plug your microSD card into your microSD card reader and then into your computer. Press Choose Storage. Select your microSD card. Now verify the information on screen and press Next. A warning that all existing data on the microSD card will be deleted will pop up and are you sure you wish to proceed? Press yes. The Raspberry Pi will now write the software to the micro SD card. Depending upon the speed of the card, the computer and the card reader, this can take up to two minutes. Once completed, it will return a message advising that it's successfully written the Home Assistant to the micro SD card. Press continue. You can now close the Raspberry Pi Imager software and eject the micro SD card from your computer. Now insert the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi. Also plug in the LAN cable into your Raspberry Pi and the other end into your router. 
which must be on the same network as your computer and also connected to the internet. Also connect up the power, which is provided by the USB-C, either by using an approved Raspberry Pi power supply or a USB power supply that can provide the required 5.1 volts at 5 amps with a minimum of 25.5 watts of power. The Raspberry Pi should start up automatically, but if not, press the LED power button at the rear to start. The Home Assistant installation will start automatically and your Home Assistant instance will be available within a few minutes. Now, as we don't have the luxury of a display connected, you don't know the IP address of your Home Assistant, but we can still connect to it using the default address. Open an internet browser, enter the address homeassistant.local colon 8123 and press enter. This should bring up your Raspberry Pi Home Assistant instance. Now, if you are running an older version of Windows or running a tight network configuration like me, this might not work. If this is the case, then you're going to need to find your IP address of your Raspberry Pi and enter the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, then colon 8123 to bring up Home Assistant. But if you're running that type of configuration, you probably know how to find your Raspberry Pi IP address on your router, as it will show up as a device called Home Assistant. Once you are connected to your Home Assistant instance, it will show that it is preparing. This can take up to 20 minutes, even on a Raspberry Pi 5. Remember, this is not an Apple Mac M4 Silicon as the previous video, so be patient. Once completed, it will show you the welcome screen. Here you can restore a backup or create a new instance. For the purposes of demonstration, I'll create a new instance. Press Create My Smart Home. Enter a name, a username, a password, and press Create Account. Search for and select a home location, and press Next. Decide if you wish to send analytics to Home Assistant, and press Next. Home Assistant will tell you if it finds compatible devices on your network. Press Finish. And you're done. You can now configure Home Assistant to meet your specific needs. I think you'll agree that considering we have deployed the hardware also in this solution, it really is the simplest and quickest solution available. Remember all other solutions we have covered of Windows, Apple Silicon and Synology NAS assume that the hosting platform is already in place and working. This is a true one-stop shop for the host and home assistant operating system and is the ideal solution for those starting out that want the option of reusing the hardware if they outgrow it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you want to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if you want to join like-minded people, then why not join the Discord channel where smart home enthusiasts meet to solve each other's problems. And if I've helped you with your Raspberry Pi home assistant installation, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.